Hello everybody, uh, my name is Filip Graliński. Um, actually, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a local here, so I'm going to give you, uh, apart from you know, um, some Haskell stuff, I'm going to give you some tips for recommendations from, for nerd trips in Poznań or around Poznań. I think one, one unique stuff is, is uh, the Steam Engine Museum in Wolstyn, which is a town, I don't know, about 50 kilometers from Poznań. So if you're a, a Steam Engine freak, you should definitely visit this museum. And actually there is, a, as far as I know, the only one regular Steam Engine line in the world, at least according to this website. Uh, so, so there are some people who are commuting to Poznań every day on a steam engine train. Yeah, so that's, that's really cool stuff. Uh, okay, so to the point. Mm. Actually, I'm uh, uh, le let me start from, from the middle because uh, uh, in, this, in, in the first time slot, I'm, I'm going to give you some background and some ideas and then we are going to basically hack. To, to there, there will be a kind of a hackathon for you. But first, if uh, uh, I'm personally, I'm using Haskell stack. So if you if you're going to to um, if you haven't um, if you haven't uh, had installed it yet, um, you would need to install Haskell stack to to run my um, uh, my stuff, and it takes uh, a little bit of time and a couple of gigabytes when you run it for the first time. So you could, you could start um, doing this now, so, so that uh, you would be ready in in, in the when when in the second time slot. Okay. Uh, by the way, if you dislike Haskell stack, there will be a task for you uh, to tell me how to run uh, cable, you know, in how to use cable to 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 build my my software. So. Uh, um, okay, so you could you could go. Um, there is a, a GitLab uh, repo for for uh, for my tool. You could also use, uh, let's say, official my official uh, repository here, or you could just go to GitLab. Uh, yeah, so. Mm, and in a moment, I'll, I'll, I'll start talking about, uh, as I said, I, I'm going to give you some background and some information about, about the whole project. Okay, so um, maybe I write it, write it uh, over here. So the, the address is GitLab dot com slash Philip and G L. Okay. Mm. Great. Okay. So uh, let me s give you a short presentation. Uh, first. Uh, a little bit of background. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm not that important, but I'm, I would like to give you some context. What it's all about and uh, what's the origin of all this idea. Well, first, I, I, would say, I, I would say that I should be doubly insulted by ex-KCD comic, because I'm both working for, I'm a computational linguist. Well, nowadays, I would say I'm a natural language processing practitioner or machine learning guy. But yeah, I'm also a computational linguist. And I use Haskell. I use Haskell every day for regular stuff, for my regular work. And in, uh, so yeah, I should be doubly insulted, yeah, in a way. Um, Will it cancel out? Pardon? Will double insulting cancel out? Maybe, maybe, yeah. Maybe it's right, yeah. Um, 
Okay, so I work um, as, an, as an assistant professor as, at Adam Mickiewicz University. Also, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, my second employer is uh, Aplica.ai. Uh, so, um, I'm using machine learning for natural language processing. Both some old stuff like uh, 19th century newspapers. This is also obviously related to, to my uh, academic interests. But also, you know, invoices, notary deeds, all sorts of uh, contemporary stuff. When I'm working, when I'm having my Applica.ai hat on. Of course, we are hiring, so if you're interested, just let me know. Mm -hmm. If you're interested in machine learning, natural language processing, machine learning evaluation, cool. Basically, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a Linux guy. I, I'm just, I'm using Linux every day for time immemorial. Um, I usually, uh, as I deal with text, I usually work simply in, 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 in the command line. And so using bash and, and, and stuff like this. So this is quite, uh, this is my ev you know, everyday stuff like pipelines like this, right? By the way, do you have any idea what, what does, does it do actually? Pardon? Yeah, so it will, it will give you what? Yeah, the last line said us, yeah. So it is, it is not a, a tricky question. But it's not totally, it gives you the, the, the top 100 means what? It, what kind of top 100? Most frequent, yeah, most frequent words, yeah. So I'm giving this because actually the funny thing is this is bash, but in a way it's functional programming, right? And we'll back to, to this later. Yeah, so this is, in, in Haskell, you've got a similar idea. They are called conduits or pipes or there are some other libraries for similar stuff. Okay, uh, so what about Haskell? Um, I'm using Haskell for, I've been using Haskell for, I, I don't know, six years or something like this. Uh, the funny thing is that... Uh, uh, I don't like Python, but I, I, I need to use from time to time. But it was just a very boring experience to learn Python. It was just 40 minutes, you know, reading uh, one book very, very, very quickly. And uh, yeah, I know Python. And I felt bored. So I, I, I wanted something more, interest, something more interesting, so I found Haskell. And it took me four months to, to really, uh, to learn Haskell, to be able to, to do something uh, reasonable. So first I, I used real world Haskell book and I failed. I read the book and I failed. I, I, I wasn't able to, to do anything uh, really in Haskell. Then, so I, I tried to read the book uh, yet, yet another time. So I failed again. Yeah. And then I, I, I started to read uh, on my way to work and on my way home, on tram. I started to read Learn Your Haskell for Great Good by uh, Miran Lipovacha. It's a funny thing because I was reading this on a, on a, on a uh, small screen smartphone yeah, on a tram. And I kind of, yeah, I, I was able to start doing something. I, I, I'm not, uh, I'm giving you... Uh, if you are if you are a beginner, I, I, I'm not sure it's it's a good piece of advice. This, if you are a be Haskell beginner, because it, actually it does not mean that real world Haskell is a is a very bad book. Probably it, it you know uh, I needed to somehow uh, um, you know to process in in my uh, in my head this the, in my head this information. And of course, it really, I think it really depends on, uh, on whether Haskell is your first programming language or the second programming language or, or the nth programming language. And 
for me it was nth programming language, so it seemed this, this way was kind of working. But actually what worked was really that I, I really was uh, uh, determined to use Haskell for my everyday work. I just, I, 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 I was a beginner, I'm, in a way I st I'm still a beginner, but I was, I was desperately trying to use it for just to replace all the other stuff with Haskell and use it every, and I, I think I managed. So the, the funny thing is that um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm sort of weird, even for Haskellers, that I'm really using Haskell for, uh, you know, real everyday dirty work when I'm working on um, processing text and uh, machine learning and so on. So for instance, I'm using Haskell for quick and dirty scripts for processing text. Previously, I was using parallel programming language. You might know this is kind of an old school tool for language for um, processing uh, text and gluing command line stuff. Uh, there is a great tool which is called Shake, which could replace make files. And make files are quite popular in, in uh, natural language processing community. Uh, not for building software, but uh, actually it turns out that processing text is a multi-stage um, multi endeavor. And it's, it, it could be very nicely expressed in makefile, except for makefile is not that nice, right? So it, it's very, uh, I was very happy to replace makefiles with Shake the shake, which is written in Haskell, which is just Haskell in a way. Another great idea I found was that um, you could write, uh, and I need to write, uh, dedicated web crawlers. You know, web crawlers that need to crawl a specific website. Yeah. And, sp and to extract some very specific information, very specific uh, web pages from, from, a, from, a, from a given uh, website. And it turns out that it's, uh, that it's really a nice idea to use arrows and Haskell, uh, what's the abbreviation for uh, Haskell XML Toolkit, oh yeah, Haskell XML Toolkit. And you can very nicely write uh, a web crawler using this toolkit. And actually you are, and by the way, I'm not using Haskell because it's so, you know, pure and nice and whatever, but I feel really, um, that I am a, a number of times more productive using Haskell. And in particular, writing with web crawlers. Basically, I can write three, four times more crawl, web crawlers using this Haskell um, uh, library than uh, using Python, beautiful Zoop or whatever, the, 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 and other frameworks for writing uh, web um, crawlers. And another example is that I convert uh, scanned uh, old newspapers, old magazines into, into nice deja vu files uh, with, with the OCR layer. So I'm giving this to, to give you some you know, examples of what really could be done with Haskell. So nothing, you know, um, this is nothing abstract. This is really stuff you can, you can do uh, every day. And what I'm going to talk to about today and what I'm, and I'm going to ask you to help me with developing this software. Um, today I'm going to talk about a, a tool for evaluating machine learning models or machine learning solutions. The tool is called, uh, actually I, I'm not sure how to pronounce this in English. In Polish I, I, say, I, I would say Geval. And in Eng GFL, so is it okay or is does it? I, I, I was just af I, I'm, I was afraid that it would have some you know uh, wrong associations. GFL is it okay for yeah. native yeah. speakers? Yeah. 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 So yeah. Uh, so uh, in Polish I would say GFL in English. Okay, let let it be uh, GFL, and uh, I think in in Warsaw it would be GFL, I I suppose. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, so uh, the tool is, uh, so the tool is not about machine learning itself. We are not going to learn uh, a neural network, but we are going to evaluate, to test, um, uh, let's say, uh, a neural network. And also I'm going to, to talk about uh, another 
uh, tool, which is a web application, which is called Gonito. Gonito, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I will pronounce it in the, in the, in the Polish way, or in a, actually in the Poznan way, so it's Gonito. So, um, and I'm going to talk, I think, I, I think I, I, I'm not going to talk much about Gonito today, I will focus on this on Friday. So if you are interested uh, uh, in web application, in uh, web application development, um, there will be uh, more of the, on this uh, on, on, on Friday. Okay? So uh, first, uh, a, a little bit uh, background about machine learning. So uh, in a way, machine learning is uh, the idea is, is simple as far as you know, the specification is concerned, the API or whatever is concerned. You just basically, um, mm, the input is simple and the output is simple. What is, not, what is not simple is all the stuff in between. So, uh, so we've got some input, which is usually quite simple, not, not structured much. <laughs> For example, uh, when you are, when, um, let's consider machine translation, like this is a good example of, of, of machine learning because nowadays mach machine translation is done with uh, machine learning uh, solutions. You know, rule-based machine tr translation is totally forgotten. So you, you've got input, let's say an, 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 a German utterance, like for example. And you've got all the stuff which is happening there which is machine learning. And you got a simple output. Of course, I'm, I'm kind of simplifying but uh, the stuff, but in a way, it's, it's like this. So there are, no, you know, there are no lots of user stories, use cases, stuff like this. Right? You just... Yeah, I, I, I wasn't sure about the word in English. What I mean, in Poznań, we call, we call it pamperek. So I mean, so they are not stuff like, you know, what's the English word for this guy? <laughs> yeah, stick, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. It's pamperek, of course. Yeah, but it's in Poznań, it's pamperek, yeah. So no, no guys like this, no pampereks, just, you know, just simple input and simple output. And I, 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 I like this, right? So no, no 400 page specifications, just simple input, simple output. But it, yeah, you know, you need to figure out what should be there inside. And in a way you are judged with a single number. Your solution is usually judged with a single number, right? For example, in machine translation, you usually have, usually use blah uh, evaluation metric. Yeah, ha ha ha, which is good for nice, which is nice for thing oriented people. Yeah, this is just very uh, crude stuff. Uh, so, uh, of course, one, one thing in machine, tr in machine learning is that you need to come up with some uh, good machine, what's this? Yeah. Uh, you need to come up with a good uh, machine learning model. Nowadays, neural networks are very popular, right? And yeah, they are quite good at solving some uh, problems. But of course, it could be a simpler stuff like logistic regression or, or actual li linear reg uh, regression, something like this. So one, of course, most people in machine learning are working on these fancy models, right? But there is one, but actually uh, evaluation in machine learning is really, really important. You need to, because you need to know whether what you are doing is good or not. Whether you are going in the right direction, whether you are improving or not. And as I said, you are, usually you are judged, you are evaluated just with a single a single number evaluation metric, right? The problem is that the choosing uh, um, the right metric is not trivial, right? Uh, so in a way, the final metric, the final evaluation metric is what? In life. 
Yeah, not exactly. Not exactly. There in, in you know in, in IT, this is not. I think this is not a good. Yeah. So what 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 is the final evaluation metric? Would do you think? Uh, the distance from the solution. No, no. This isn't the final. No, the final is you know <laughs> money in the bank. You know, <laughs> or actually. Uh, von Neumann would say that this is not money, but evaluation, uh, evaluation function, evaluation. Um, sorry, uh, va um, what's the name? Uh, ut utility function, right? Utility value. So that's the final uh, final metric. But it's not. It's some. It's usually cumbersome to use this metric on a when you're working day, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. So we need some approximations. As you said, you need some distance from. When you're talking about translation, you need some distance from expected translation uh, to the translation you've, you, your system generated, right? So you need to approximate this. And there's a lot of discussion in machine learning, what is the best evaluation metric? So you will find papers uh, uh, whose title, whose title con titles con contain stuff like machine learning evaluation evaluation because uh, there is discussion how to evaluate evaluation metrics. You need, some, you need, you need to have some ideas to, uh, to choose. This, one, this evaluation metric is better than another one. And actually, from time to time, people go, go even more meta, right? So I, 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 found, I think there was a, a paper in machine translation when you will find then there was Machine translation, evaluation, 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 or something like evaluation of machine translation, evaluation, evaluation. So stuff like this. So it's really crucial. It's not, you know, it's not the, of course, 90% of stuff you are doing in machine learning is really developing the models. But you really, you really, you need, you, need, you really need to stop and, and, and to think about, about how to evaluate your models, right? And now I'm going to quickly go through, um, Mm, some examples of machine learning. So in machine learning, you have uh, unsupervised learning uh, when uh, you are just asking the, 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 the computer to, mm, to describe, in a way, to describe the data. So there are no preconceived notions what is right or, or what, what is wrong. You are just asking to, let's say, cluster the data in, uh, you have. But more often, you, you will encounter supervised learning when, when you're giving the machine uh, um, a, a, a so-called train set with labels. So you're, you're uh, enforcing some, you're giving some uh, notions that, hey, this is spam, this is spam, this is no spam, this is no spam, this is spam, 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 no spam, 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 like this. Yeah? So uh, this is supervised learning, and I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Well, first of all, it's, it's the simplest, let's say, uh, example of, of machine learning of, uh, is binary classification. So for example, the, the, the uh, well-known uh, Example of, of uh, is, is uh, spam, anti-spam filtering. Basically, you have spam and ham. So ham is a, is a nice word for non-spam. Uh, so you want ham, but not spam. Okay. But I'm going to give you uh, more example, more examples using now using the GFL tool. One example is guessing the gender of the author of a short Polish text. So we are going to well, actually, to be pr quite precise, uh, I would need to say that uh, your task is to guess the erased grammatical gender for a first-person expression. Because Polish is a funny language in which uh, for many first-person, not for all, but for many of them, for many, many first-person expressions, there is a difference if the speaker is a uh, is male or female, right? Is a woman or a man? So, for example, in Polish, uh, when you have uh, when you translate into Polish utterances like "I did," you need to know the gender of the person because you've got different uh, 
renderings, right? Zrobiłem, zrobiłam. So that's the difference. And the funny thing is that uh, actually you have five genders in Polish language. But in the first person, only two of them are used, except, except for some minor, you know, special cases, I would say. <laughs> so, uh, so in general, you will encounter just, just two of, uh, just, just feminine and masculine gender for. And uh, as far as I know, Polish is the language with the largest number of such expressions, or rather, in Polish, uh, as far as I know, there are no language in the world where the number of such expressions is larger. I'm always writing like this, and I'm hoping for some reviewer to, to start to yell at me, no, 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 there is some, you know, uh, blah, blah, flatlandish language in which you have more expressions like this. So far, I have, I have not encountered a reviewer like this. So, so I'm really getting more and more confident that Polish is the language in, in, in which this uh, happens. Uh, there are no languages. But I, I would be happy to be, to, be, to be told that this is not true. Okay, so we are going to... Uh, uh, so the trick is that I, I, I just got a lot of text, Polish text from the internet, and it's relatively easy to, 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 to tell uh, whether it's masculine or feminine form. Um, even for a computer, even it's easy to, to, to write a, a bunch of rules, uh, a bunch of regular expressions to, so that uh, uh, a machine would know that. And, you're, and then, I, then I erased these markers, right? So your task is to guess uh, this grammatical gender, which is in a way, which is an approximation of the gender of the real gender of the author of a short text. So, so this is the challenge. The idea is this, in, this is quite popular in machine learning community, that you are given a challenge like this. Actually, actually not you, but uh, you're, you should write some machine learning solution, which is able to, to tackle this challenge, right? And in a way, my, my software is for such challenges, okay? Um, and now I'm going to present you this, uh, this, this uh, challenge as a, it, it could be, so you could go there, but it could be also downloaded, the whole data set could be uh, cloned using Git, Unfortunately, it, this is really kind of big data, so not, not huge data, but uh, so it will take some time to download this stuff. So be patient if, you, if you're interested. Um, but basically, you would need uh, to, to... So it's, a, it's, a, it's a simply a, 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 a Git repository. So where is this? So I'm going to show you how it looks. And I'm going to show you how, how GEVAL works. Um, no, it's not here. It's here. Uh, I'm not going to clone this because it would take too much time now. Yeah, this is here. So, how a challenge how a challenge looks um, looks like. First, you have a train set. So the train set is is the stuff your learning algorithm needs to to learn how to distinguish um, a man from a woman, as far, at least as far as short texts are concerned. Short texts are concerned. So this is, this is uh, compressed, of course, but you don't have to, un uh, just, uh, just uh, mm, uh, uh, you, you don't have to uncompress uh, the file. You could just do it on, on, on the fly, right? So you could, you could write uh, a pipeline like this to see, the the first examples, right? These are real. Uh, these are real uh, texts taken from internet. So if you know Polish, that y that my that uh, might make you smile because there are a lot of 
errors and, and mistakes and the language is very informal. There are even uh, swear words and, and so on. So you've got a short text and you get a label. Yeah, because it's supervised learning, supervised learning. So you are telling the computer that this was written uh, by um, uh, by uh, uh, a male, at least to be precise, the or to be more to be precise, the, the in original text, the the masculine uh, gender was grammatical gender was used, right? And this one was written by a f in for in in this case the uh, the uh, fem feminine mask feminine gender was was used, right? I yeah, if I you no, 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 no. This is not an error. If you Polish speakers are just, you know, uh, <laughs> are getting angry because something is wrong here, yeah, I, that's a good, that's a good question because, of course, if, uh, uh, of course, I normalized all the feminine forms, I, I raised them, okay? Oh, it's after normalization. Yeah. So, so it's it's about after normalization. So in, of course. Original text was something like byłeś wszystkim co kiedykolwiek miałam, right? So in the original text, the feminine form was used. But that you, you wouldn't need machine learning to distinguish, as I said, you just need a couple of regular expressions to distinguish these genders. So, so yeah, the task of your, the machine learning task is to try to distinguish grammatical genders using some other uh, some other features, some other features of the text, right? Using th the words that were used, maybe, I don't know, uh, uh, maybe women tend to write longer text or shorter text, I don't know, just to find some ideas to... Uh, actually, uh, uh, there's some problem because uh, the stuff is not so... Is not so uh, the task is rather difficult because I, I carefully balanced the, the, the text corpus, the text collection, so that from each website, the same number of feminine and masculine texts were taken. So even if you have, a, let's say, um, a message board about pregnancy, I took the same number of uh, the balance, 50-50 like there was like, even if in general there will be some uh, it, it, it is not the case, right? So this is the, your task. Uh, to learn from this, to learn from this, right? But, as I said, you need to evaluate your solution somehow. So usually the approach is that you have uh, some separate test sets, right? So you split your data set into the train set and you have separate test sets. The convention is that usually it's called dev zero on or dev one for the if there are more than why dev because this is so called uh, so there is a sub directory which is called dev zero and dev <coughs> dev is stands for development set development set <coughs> so development set is the test set using used uh, by you um, in your day to day work on your uh, machine learning models right so the dev set is, the test set is something like this. So you have just the input and your solution will be evaluated. So your solution should take this input and should guess whether it was written by a male or female. Okay? So it should just return F or M labels and then and then uh, it will be evaluated, right? So uh, for example, um, so your uh, your uh, your uh, model should be able to guess whether this is uh, this is uh, uh, written by male or female, right? At least by a person who are using uh, feminine, masculine, first person um, expressions. And of course, <coughs> so uh, the input to your machine learning uh, solution is this. And you need to guess the stuff, but <coughs> uh, uh, then you're going to use an evaluator, evaluator, to evaluate how many times you guessed correctly and how many times 
there was a there was a miss okay so what kind of evaluation metric you would use for for binary classification when there was there are two classes and you could just through there is either hit or miss no, the simplest one is what? What kind of? I, I'm talking about evaluation, not uh, not uh, machine learning method. But what kind of? What's the simplest evaluation metric for for binary classification? The the most rate obvious. Yes, yeah, success rate or accuracy. Yeah. So basically, it could be like. In 70% cases, you guessed correctly, right? So this, this the simplest measure, I, I guess you could imagine, just accuracy. So the percentage of the of, of hits, right? The percentage of right answers. So this is the the default default uh, metric here. So if you run Geval, yeah. it it will. Yeah. Why? Because uh, actually, uh, by de by default. Uh, the, the test set, which is called test A, is used, but actually it's not there because test A uh, is a is the final test set, which should be you know put in, which should be put aside at the beginning of your project and put in some you know, in some drawer, and just you should forget about this this test set, and and you should so it should be used for kind of a final evaluation. So it's it's not here on purpose, right? It's not here on purpose because when you are developing your model, you should use a dev set. Uh, so you, you should write something like this, and then you got the result. So it turns out that uh, this particular solution has the accuracy of 70%. Well, well uh, I think uh, first I, 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 I should have uh, show you the the structure of the so this was the input right we we um, we have already seen that this is the input the expected what do you need to evalu evaluate this you need to expect you need uh, expected answers so these are in expected tsv file um, Actually, it's not a TSV file because this is just, uh, but in general, it, it might be a TSV file, a top separated value file. You will find, let's say, the ground truth, the golden standard. To be frank, actually, there might be some noise in this, but you need some ground truth for evaluation. So you just assume that this is correct, right? Uh, and it, in a way, it's correct. Well, it's it's uh, in, in, it's correct for this uh, task if you say that it's about guessing the grammatical gender, because yeah, there was feminine grammatical gender in the second example, and the first there was a masculine grammatical uh, gen gender was was used, right? So this is the expected output, uh, the ground truth. So what do you need? What do you need? What what more do you need for the evaluation? So you have the expected output, but you need when y when you are going to when you when you want to evaluate your solution, what basically you need? This is the expected output, and what what the actual output? The actual output, yeah, the real output from your from your system, and but and, and the convention is that it it should be given. When you are working within this framework, you should give out TSV file, right? So this is the this is the actual output, right? So you could compare this. I, I I'm I'm paste the two files, so you could see. Oh, sorry, it's not. It's expected in TS and out. Sorry. Yeah. So. Uh, this is the uh, first column is the expected output and the, the second column is the actual output. So how to calculate the metric? It's relatively easy. You just compare and if it's the same, it's, it's a hit and it's a success. And if it's different, it's, it's a miss, right? So you just count the number of all items and, and you count the number of hits and you just divide the number of hits by the number of, of all the items. But it's quite simple. And that's and that's uh, that's the way you've got the result, which is 
for this, so this is a particular, some particular solution. Actually, I think it's the best solution for, so far for the challenge. So the, the best solution for the challenge so far uh, yields uh, accuracy of a little bit over seven, um, 70%, right? 70% accuracy, which is, for me, it was surprisingly good because uh, the texts are really short. So it's not, it's, 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 it, it seemed, at least, it seemed to me that it, it will be, that it will be harder. So that's, and actually G eval is for this, right? It just basically counts this number and it seems boring and easy, right? But for machine learning people, this is the, you know, the greatest moment in your life when you see, when you see your evaluation metric going up, right? You got really, really, really happy. So, of course, you need to make sure that the evaluation is done correctly, that there is no stupid error, stupid mistake in your evaluation procedure, right? Okay, another, another challenge, and I'm going to show you some other uh, me metrics. A quite similar challenge would be to <coughs> guess whether uh, a text, whether a text uh, expresses um, a positive or negative uh, emotion, sentiment, right? Or to be precise, because again, this is an approximation, guess the erased emoticon. So I, again, I took an, a number of texts from the internet and just I removed the emoticon uh, some there was some you know happy face and and some sad face and I'm going I'm just and and I, and I assumed that if a person was using uh, 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 s s s uh, you know a happy smiley a smiley then it was be then it was a positive emotion and negative otherwise so in, it, it's 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 a similar in a way it's a similar trick to the to the um, guessing the, the grammatical gender. So I just erased the, some information and the, and the challenge is to reconstruct this, this binary information. I just, I just took only positive and negative text. I, I, I removed neutral, right? Uh, so let, let me have a look because it's kind of, uh, yeah, it's here. So again, the ch you, again, you've got some train set, right? Uh, oops. You've got some train set, which uh, might make Polish people laugh or not. Uh, this is just the beginning of the train set, and this, in this case, there was a positive emoticon, and, th and the second one was a negative one because you have one ones and zeros here used as labels. And um, actually, uh, there is some problem with uh, accuracy. Why do you think accuracy is, might not be the perfect evaluation metric? Any ideas? Uh, yeah, that's the first question, right? Actually, there are. They are, they are a balance, so this is not an issue. But yeah, that's really... Uh, important. Let's say you have a, an anti uh, anti theft alarm, right? And it's uh, and it's actually it's quite easy to have nearly one hundred percent of accuracy. How to create uh, an anti theft alarm with nearly one hundred percent accuracy? Always false. Always, always false. Yeah, this could be a perfect. As far as accuracy is concerned, this is a perfect accuracy of this for anti-theft, uh, you know, uh, warning is nearly 100%. This or I don't know, this, whatever, right? Because you just you just return false, 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 false. In in nearly all cases, you are right. right? So the accuracy is that's one that's one reason accuracy is is sometimes it's not the perfect the perfect idea. But this is not the problem here, and this was not the problem for the, gen for the guessing of the gender, because the, the, the test set was perfectly balanced, you know, 50-50. So there was a... What could be uh, some other... Re other any could be there other reasons for, for this? Overfitting? Pardon? Overfitting? 
Yeah, overfitting is always the problem, but if you split the data set into the train set and completely separate test set, at least mm, you will be, uh, I'm, not, I, I'm not saying that this, this will save you from overfitting, but at least you will know that you, uh, you overfit, right? Yeah, and I, I, I mean, in some cases, uh, there are, uh, in some cases, right, you are, you, you, people, uh, false positives might be more costly than false negatives or the other way, way around. <laughs> um, so you need some, sometimes you need to tune for this. Yeah, that might be another reason. So how do you get a false positive? So false positive is, <laughs> yeah, false positive. There was a funny funny photo with a so false positive is when for example for anti-theft alarm false positive is where is when when it is telling yeah. there is a, a thief you know and yeah. and there is no there's nobody right so this is the, the gender or the most yeah so that should be yeah but in some cases yeah but but for example imagine that this is kind of a business uh, stuff like you're 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 dealing with your clients right uh, some people are sending you some emails or or something like this so i think in 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 the business context you should more care about negative stuff like complaints or something like this so false if you assume that uh, so I, I would say false positives are more costly than false negatives right for for in business usually in use business context yes. so you should some kind so you should attach uh, different weights to, to, to this state, right? In the case of telling a person male and female false positive would be one class. I mean, you, you need to de define which is positive, yeah, which is. Uh, and in a way. Say false positive as a woman classified as a man, and false negative as a man classified as a woman. Yeah, so yeah. So, but. But in, in, yeah, but in the case. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's just. It tends to be a, a, a yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I, I mean hits. Uh, so so uh, so misses are f false positives and false negatives are misses, and true positives and true negatives are are hits, right? That's the the first thing, and of course, if you have a, a kind of a, a symmetrical situation like in gender guessing, there is, that's just arbitrary, yeah. which which one will be called positive and which one negative, right? But uh, in case like anti-theft uh, alarm, it's really anti-burglary alarm. It's really, yeah, it, it, so it makes sense to have positive, yeah. Well, just spam detection, right? Yes, yeah, spam. So you, you would usually say that spam is the positive class because you would, uh, of course, it not, not, not why, the reason is not, is not that it's something positive. Yeah, the spam is not, but... It's 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 the, it, usually the positive class is defined as something you are looking for, right? So, um, but math but mathematically it's just a, a, a matter of convention in a way. But there is also yet another reason why. Imagine some kind of a business context in which you are selling, I don't know, to a bank or some big big company. You are selling a solution like this to to guessing the sentiment of a. Of, of an email, right? So that your, your customer could, could um, distinguish complaints from, you know, from, you, from other uh, messages or emails. So what would be also important? Why, and this is not so uh, easy to, to spot. It's not so easy to spot the problem. Accuracy is, is too crude. You, just, you have just zeros and ones, right? And what would you expect from a good classifier, binary classifier, ra something more than just zeros and ones? What could a good classifier, binary classifier, actually return? Something like a scale from 1 to 10. Yeah, or maybe simply the probability. The probability yeah. Right. So actually, it would be better to, have to, 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 to evaluate the probabilities, right? Because you can have... Uh, class two classifiers which give more or less the same labels their accuracy is similar but one of them is more confident 
gives better probabilities. Yeah? So uh, actually, uh, a nice way to evaluate binary uh, classifications would be to, to take the probability into concern. So you could redef redefine your, your task, your challenge. So, hey, give me not just zeros and one, but give me the probability of one. And if you give, if you return one, it will be, it means that, yeah, I'm totally, absolutely sure that it is one. If you return 0 0.9, it means it's, it, I'm really, really, sh I'm really sure that it's nine, but I'm not, you know, totally perfectly, I'm not totally, completely sure that it's, 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 it's the positive class, right? So here in this challenge, this uh, way to evaluate, um, using this and I'm, I'm going to I, I'm talking about evaluation metrics uh, because uh, in a moment y you will start to uh, um, uh, uh, actually implement some evaluation metrics so that's quite there's a whole range of evaluation metrics and I, I hope some of you will will try to, to implement some of them but to the point so the evaluation metric used for in this challenge is so-called uh, logistic loss. So this is the result is something like this, uh, but it, it should not be interpreted as a kind of a percentage or something like this. This is just a value. The smaller, actually, the smaller the better. In in perfect classifier would have because it's loss, right? And, and th that's also an important point. Some for some evaluation metrics, the higher the better, right? Accuracy, the higher the better. But if you have a loss function on, or error function, it's the other way around, you know, the lower, the better, right? Okay, so log loss, which is used here, uh, is a kind of a math mathematical formula. I, I'm not going to explain this, but the lower the better and the best value is zero. So if your classifier is perfect, always giving the the zero probability for negative class and one probability for positive class, it will be, the value will be zeros. The zero is the, the perfect value here for this classifier. But actually it's kind of a, you might be not, it's, it's quite hard to interpret for humans, right? Uh, so you could also using GEVAL, you could also calculate other, other metrics like accuracy and likelihood. So you could, you could, you could, so accuracy is 78%. Now, now that looks quite okay for a short text. It's quite okay. 78% of accuracy, right? And there's also a, uh, a similar uh, metric, which is called likelihood, which works on probabilities. And the likelihood is the geometric mean. So basically it could be interpreted as a probability. It is, this one is not probability. It just happens to be between one and zero, but this one is log loss is not probability. Likelihood could be interpreted as a probability. It's a geometric mean of, of the probability, probabilities given to the right class by your classifier. Okay, if you don't, uh, if, if I'm, uh, if I was unable to explain this, not, doesn't matter, just uh, what I was, uh, what I mean is this is really a kind of a, this could be interpreted as a probability. But this is a geometric mean of probabilities, and geometric mean is kind of harsh. It punishes you for low values, right? Okay. No. Okay, so I'm, I'm just trying to finish. Yeah, so that's one idea. And the, the nice thing, and this is, I would say, now it's getting interesting as far as for machine learning practitioners, because with just a final thought before before uh, the br the break, and I promise after the break, we are going to go into Haskell code, to 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 um, to to do really Haskell stuff, but I need this introduction. So actually, uh, GFL is able to run the evaluation line by line for each item. So for each item, you could. Uh, so it should be no, it's uh, should go yeah, it should be here. So you could go line by line and you can see the evaluation metric for each line, for each item, for each record, right? And actually you could also sort, the default option is sorting, starting from 
the worst values because we are usually interested in this. So here is, for example, the short text for which there was a largest discrepancy between, between the real uh, class and the probability. So the real class was one, so it was, there was a positive smiley there, it's positive emoticon, but my classifier was pretty sure that it is a negative text, right? And actually, if you are, if you are a poly, if you, why, why you would need something like this? Because it's, it's really for debugging your, your model. You could see what's f using, looking at outliers like this, you could debug your model, you could check maybe there are some problems in your data set. And actually, if you, if, you, if you know Polish, this is quite interesting because the text is, yeah, it's actually rather negative. It's, it's about some, some woman who, who is suspecting her husband of cheating. And it's really, so all, all about this is about this, about her, uh, you know, uh, her paranoia, probably justified, uh, seemingly justified uh, about her husband. And then there's just one sort of positive utterance that her husband uh, like started to, to like texting to her, to, you know, to, to, to the woman. Just because maybe he was texting too much to, to this lady, he was, you know. Yeah, so this is, this is quite, and now it's getting really useful and you could, you could debug your model. So after the break, you, you, you will go, uh, we'll go into the, into Haskell code, right? Thanks. Okay, so let's let's go back uh, to my presentation. Just uh, just uh, so I, I so I just remind you that uh, in a moment. Uh, in a moment, we are going to, 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 to start coding. So please uh, download the stuff and try to. And actually, maybe it would be a good idea to, 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 uh, to do this now because there might be some issues. There was one issue on, on, on with LZ when, when stack uh, setup or test or whatever was run, there was some LZMA. Miss, yeah. Missing and are you able to solve this? Yeah, I, I, I did solve it and I passed the solution on Discord channel. So ah, okay, so great. Oh. Yeah. So you, you would need, so uh, you might need to install uh, some package for. Uh, uh, for my it's a brew install XZ. Uh, XZ. Yeah. Something like this, yeah. yeah. Yeah, or it, could, or it could be LZ, LZMA, right? Something like that. So you might need, apart from, from this, these are simply uh, uh, compression libraries written in, in C or C++, so you just need to uh, download them. Um, okay, so just briefly, let me go back to the presentation. Oops, there, where is it? This. Sorry for switching, but I, I lost my presentation. Mm. Uh, yeah, sort of. Mm. Okay, so I'm go back here. I think I, I'm I, I will, I, I'm going to back here. So there is also multi-class classification when you are going to guess the domain. And <coughs> just just one important uh, thing is uh, regression. Uh, so regression is, is the prediction task when you are guessing a continuous number, a continuous number rather than some class, right? So uh, just a puzzle, just a puzzle for you. In for text, you have some, you could you could you could have binary classification like uh, like positive negative, or you could have multi-class classification like the domain of a text. Any ideas what could be, uh, what could be done for, uh, what kind of uh, regression could be done for texts? 
an, 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 an example of regression task for texts. Regression tasks, it means you guess a continuous number rather than a class. And ideas for texts. What kind of, of a feature of a text? Yeah, it, sentiment could be expressed as a, as a kind of a continuous value from minus 10 to plus 10 rather than just positive negative. Yeah, that's just one example. Any other ideas? Yeah, age of the writer, that's a nice idea. Or the publication date. That's quite similar, but not the same. The publication date of a text, creation date of a text, yeah. So this, these are examples of regression tasks. And accuracy was the, was the most obvious metric for, uh, for accuracy. So what is the most obvious metric for regression? When you are comparing some va numerical values, some numbers, basically. So, for example, pardon? Pardon? Yeah, it could be means, it, it basically, most popular is mean square error, but there is actually it could be a mean average error, right? Uh, me, sorry, mean absolute error, yeah, mean absolute error. So, uh, actually in a moment I'm going to, to implement uh, mean uh, absolute error in, because it's not, it's not there. So okay, so let's uh, just let me go just quickly one just one. So f just one, just one slide. What's the state of uh, so what's the state of Haskell in machine learning? Uh, well, uh, more um, people are using Python usually for in machine learning, especially for neural networks stuff like this. Uh, plus, there are some old school command line people like me. There are some uh, also some uh, Apache Spark, usually sc uh, Scala. How, how is this pronounced? Sc Scala? 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 Scala. Just okay. And Scala um, is is you where usually Scala is used, and also of course our programming language is used, but probably more by data scientists rather than machine learning people. Of course. These are overlapping areas. Not much Haskell so far, uh, as far as I know. Is there any usage of Prolog? No, no, it's, it's totally, yeah. The, the funny thing is that I'm, all, I'm, I'm always boasting that I'm, I'm just one of two people in Poland who earned money in a commercial project using Prolog. And so far there was nobody else who, who would say, no, 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 I'm me. M me as w um, me as well. No, no. So that's no, no. Prolog is not is not really used uh, much uh, because basically Prolog is a is related to rule based solutions, right? And and rule based solutions were very popular in computational linguistics in natural language processing, but that's totally you know forgotten. It's really and actually my my background is is rule based uh, stuff, but yeah, I I. I, I, I I realized that it is it it, it it would have no no future really. Machine learning is the standard now. But actually, writing an, an evaluator in in Haskell, I mean this GEval tool, is kind of a nice idea to have a let's say a foot in 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 this in in, in the door of machine learning, because uh, I I. I I've seen it so many times. People are, were writing their solution in Python for machine learning, and the evalu and and they also were writing uh, the evaluator in Python, and it was, you know, strongly coupled. So the machine learning uh, solution and the evaluator was strongly coupled, and then I saw it many times. People were making mistakes, so there was uh, somehow. Uh, the evaluation was polluted by some information from the training set in a complicated way. Uh, so actually, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice idea to have uh, a separate evaluator, just to make sure you, didn't, you did not make a stupid mistake when doing the evaluation. It's quite a reasonable idea to have a, a kind of a wall between the evaluation and, uh, and, and the machine learning stuff itself. So so I think it's 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 not a it's it's, it's not a uh, bad idea and, and GEval is basically is a command line tool, so it's it's more it's it's more like a command line tool than a, than a Haskell library. 
So this is going and is used by people in machine learning community, not, not by Haskellers, right? They don't have to know that this is, you know, that we are uh, trying to subvert their, their world with Haskell, right? This is just this is just a nice command line tool, right? Okay, so let's 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 hack, let's go in, in, in let's have a look at the code. So I'm going to use uh, now I'm going to implement uh, mean absolute error, right? Uh, uh, curiously and interestingly, probably for some people who are uh, not uh, uh, in this community, actually mean square error is usually used, not just the more obvious mean absolute error. I will explain in a moment what are these. So um, I'm going to implement mean absolute error and uh, as an example, ah, by the way, uh, if you are already got bored by my talk, you could, you could just start, start coding. There is a, there is a, uh, here on, on GitLab, you will find issues and I don't know why it's, it shows one because there are actually there are 18 issues. So this, these are, these are, let's say, um, tasks for you. If you, if you issues, you could just, <laughs> uh, if you'd like, you could, you could help me with developing this, this software. And these are real tasks. So these are not, you know, some just for exercise. These are real stuff that will be useful in my software. Uh, so you could just have a look and there are all sorts of various tasks, some easier, more challenging, some, if there is Haskell's, what does Haskell stuff means, label mean? It means that it is more about Haskell. There is some hardcore Haskell stuff there. There is some algorithm, if you are more interested, if you are, if you don't feel, you know, um, um, if you're a, a beginner, you could, but you're interested in, algori in algorithms, you could, you could try algorithm um, mm, stuff. So it's you know, up, up for grabs for you. If you, if you want, just uh, you, you, could, you could. And that's what are we are going to do in, in this time slot and in the next time slot. And of course, I'm going to, yeah. Mm, I'm here to help you. You could ask me if you, if you have an. Uh, but first I'm going to do, as I said, a live programming session. And this is, this is going to be real improvisa, improvisation, really improvisation. Uh, I didn't, you know, I didn't have, I don't have some, you know, under the desk, some solution. I mean, just you know, put it here. That will be, I'm going to implement uh, mean absolute error. So first, uh, you need to uh, s if you if you clone the re the repository, uh, if you install uh, if you install Haskell stack, you should get something like like this. Yeah, passed. So everything is okay so far because it's the current version, so no surprise here. As I said, if you don't like Haskell stack, there is a task for you. If you are a, a Haskell stack hater. <laughs> You could just, where is this? Oh, yeah. So there is a task for you. Just show me how to use cable, right? Okay. And write uh, and add this information to readme. Um, and yeah, so I'm now I'm going to show you a real Haskell code and and yeah, I'm 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 really open to to any criticism, any you know. Uh, if you point, it's it's really it's really messy code. Yeah, so I'm really um, I don't hide anything. Um, it's stuff which is doing real uh, real stuff, and yeah, I, I, you can point me. Yeah, this is nonsense. This is not idiomatic Haskell. Please tell me. I still feel like a beginner, feel, feel a beginner here. So please tell me. And so in some cases, I, I, I will say, yeah, yeah, I know this is stupid, but you know, one of my daughters was, I remember the moment when one of, one of my daughters was in, interrupted me and I just left this stuff. 
the way it was. And in some cases, I would be, yeah, in some cases, it would be like, um, I, 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 I definitely I will learn something. So just please tell me if, if anything is, is, is really wrong, yeah? Uh, pardon? Uh, What's the return type of your main function here? Uh, here is the, actually the main function is, is here. No, no, the main function in this file, the test. Uh, equals IO of the, the empty step? <coughs> yeah, this is empty, this is kind of a void, right? It's a like probably like a ligature for Java. Oh, it's yeah. just a ligature for units, okay, never mind. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, because I'm uh, I'm using I, I'm not sure is the question about this, but I'm using in in Emacs you got you got some Unicode formatting. So yeah. if if arrow it turns something like this, so it's exactly it's right. really cool. I like this. <laughs> so actually, this is just a Unicode a single Unicode character. This right, not two columns, but a single character. Yeah, that's that's really but cool. Just like two parentheses. Yeah, it's normally it's well. I I would be so s actually it's just like uh, it's something like this, right? So that's but Emacs is cool. Yeah, I like this. Uh, mm, so yeah, so I just started by breaking this stuff. Yeah, what's wrong? Yeah, now it's okay. So uh, these are uh, so these, yeah. Yeah, sort of. I'm using I'm using the yeah. That's that's really uh, yeah. I should have tried to. Traps it, right? If you look at the left, there's like lit little icons that show it's continuous. Yeah, it's continuous. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. It's really bad. It should be. Okay. I should keep seventy characters limit or something like this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're right. I'm um, I feel like a sinner. Yeah, I feel like I feel a sinner. Yeah. Uh, so, and that's uh, actually that would make reading the stuff a little bit harder. So yeah, uh, there are some long lines here. So be be aware that there are some some lines are long, and you and, and the line are wrapped in in Emacs using this. Um, yeah, as, as you noticed, there is this arrow or something, right? And, yeah. and so this this is, uh, of course, I'm using uh, automated tests, unit tests. Let's say unit tests. Uh, so I'm I'm using test hspec library, whatever it's called. Um, HSpec. So I think there there will be a, a session about testing after this, right? So the, the so actually you will use you will learn about testing more. So of course you know I'm 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 going to keep uh, to the TDD principle and test development test driven development. So first I'm going to write a test, right? Using this this stuff. I have a kind of uh, a number of conventions here for tests. So the tests, so here main, 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 ha main function is obviously like main in, in C. This is the main function for, for this test, uh, for running test, for the tester. I mean, not for the GEVAL command line tool, but for testing it. And here we have a, and here you have a, a, a your, you have a special monad for running uh, for running uh, these kind of tests. These are all, st all, all the tests you, you, you've already seen here, right? These are these tests, um, unit tests. And then, uh, so this is, this is a monad because there is do. If you don't feel sure, you know, what a monad really is, well, it's basically here. It's just a kind of a sequence of of of, of actions. I would say a monad is a kind of a, a a sequence of actions plus with some stuff hidden um, uh, under the hood, right? So basically, here our tests are are uh, are launched. 
So there is some, and I'm going to write as kind of a test for. There is already a mean square error metric. Yeah, mean square error. And mean absolute error is kind of similar. So I'm going to start like this. Oops, what's going on? <coughs> what's this? So, so I'm really. No, oh no. Ah, it just worked yesterday. <laughs> I should have checked today. Oh my god, so what should I do? Just switch intero mode for the time being. I don't know. Oh my god. Well, something got wrong. Ah, oh, that's yeah. But it, but you see it's it's real, it's it's live. It's totally totally live, you know. I'm just trying to rerun Emacs. But a moment ago it worked, it was working okay. Okay, so again, so the test, by the way, the test, this test specification is here. It's spec.hs. Let's try again. Hopefully it will work. Hopefully. No. Uh -huh. I don't know why it is not working. Bad idea. Mm. Okay, for the time being, I just. Marf is low. Okay, so I'm going to implement. Uh, actually, it works. Yeah, weird. Mean absolute error. Uh, so it will be something like uh, the abbreviation will be MAE, right? Mean absolute error. So now I'm going to prepare a, a test challenge. So there will be a kind of a toy challenge just to, to, to check the evaluator, right? Uh, and uh, by the way, uh, there are some issues about, a number of issues are about implementing uh, uh, an, a metric. So if you if 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 you if you if you if you are going to give a try to to, to issues like this, you could you could follow me now, or you could you could then look at the commit I I I, I I'll make in a moment, right? So, uh, by convention, I'm using a, a structure of uh, directories and sub sub directories to keep these challenges. So I'm going to write. Um, to create the, the structure, M -A -A -M -A -E simple. There will be the subdirectory for the test itself, and there will be a subdirectory for the for the solution. Of course, as I said, this is going to be a toy challenge and some fake toy solution, right? Just for testing whether the and I'm starting from the from writing the test, you know, test driven development, right? Mm. And first, I need to create the test specification for uh, for the yes. Yeah, so the metric will be called like this. The default metric is called is kept in config uh, .txt file. I'm creating the file, um, and now I'm going to create the the uh, expected output. Of course, it's a kind of a hello world toy toy challenge. So there will be just let's say three three lines there. So the expected output. Let's say we are going to guess the the age of the of of uh, how old is how old the author of a text is. So let's say the first text was written was by somebody who was uh, let's say thirty years uh, thirty year old. Yeah, 
And the second one will be, let's say, something like this. And the third one, let's say, I don't know, whatever. Right? So that will be the expected output. Yeah? Uh, so it's uh, okay. So how to do this? Actually, the problem is the funny thing is that uh, okay. I see. Yeah, but I cannot move the terminal. I don't use any bloody windows here. I mean, <laughs> so, so it's just. Uh, uh, and could it could it be done uh, on on the yeah there? Yeah, that's the right solution. Yeah. <laughs> My screen space is too precious to have any, you know, borders or something like this. <laughs> so it's okay now, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, okay. So, um, by the uh, by the way, I'm using re Red Poison Window Manager. So. Yeah. 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 Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Control D. <laughs> I mean, in at least in in, in Bash in, in Linux, yeah, or probably the same as yeah. Control D. It's it's and, and the closes the stuff. Yeah. So now I'm uh, I'm going. Let's assume that we have a solution, which returns stuff like. Uh, oh my God. I think it's too many of them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's okay. So now I'm going to put a solution, some fake solution to our challenge, or actually a solution. Yeah. Uh, so uh, 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 as I mentioned in the first time slot, the convention is that uh, the, the, the output of your, of your model, of your program, should be uh, written to out.tsv file. So let's say the first for the first text my system returned something like this right for the second returned something like this and for the third it was perfect okay so it was yeah 18 and a half okay so uh, what is the mean ap win so what is the what 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 is the mean absolute error here so absolute is like absolute value in, in mathematics, right? So there is no, an error is error. So, so what do you think, what is the mean absolute values? This is, these are real expected values and these are values returned by the system. Some of the predicted values might be uh, yeah. as uh, normalized by the number of yeah. examples. Yeah, yeah. So just have a look because it's it's quite. Don't be you know afraid. Oh sorry, don't be afraid of. This is really simple mathematics. It's not really uh, hard stuff because it's basically it's basically something like this. I I'm I'm write it down here. It's. So it's uh, you just uh, calculate the error, right? So it's something like this. You just use the absolute value plus uh, y absolute value rather than just the difference. Yeah, because it would it might cancel out. Of course, if it, it's it's if you uh, if you give, uh, uh, you just want to have the value, not just. It does not matter whether the value is uh, the 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 guest value is uh, is uh, smaller or greater. It just so you need the absolute value to minus right plus uh, okay. Something like this, and this all divided by three, right? Normalized by the number of so the 
it will be something like sorry I'm using Polish convention here <coughs> so this is what one five yeah yeah. So the expected the expected uh, absolute error for this toy example is 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 what is uh, is one and a half, right? Uh, by the way, uh, what is interesting is here. So run run g eval test is is kind of my my function to run to run the, this, this kind of tests. Uh, there, are, there, are, uh, there are some, uh, you know, usual Haskell test stuff like this, when I'm just, so here, for example, I'm just testing some function, some Haskell function I, I wrote, right? But usually here I'm, I'm testing uh, the gEval as it is used as a command line tool, right? And this run gEval test is a kind of a wrapper for this testing, right? So I'm telling here, uh, so run the evaluator for this challenge uh, in, in the directory uh, mae simple, and it should return almost one and a half. Why almost? And not just should return, should be equal. Rounding. It's rounding, yeah. We are talking about doubles, right? So it's really, it wouldn't be a good idea just to, because actually the returned value might be something like this, yeah? So, so we just return almost. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure, you know, uh, uh, and backticks here, what, what does, what do backticks mean here? Do you know? Just question to to check your knowledge of Haskell what does this mean uh, it's an infix. yeah so in infix so it could be uh, <sighs> I hate this. <coughs> so mm, it could be written like like actually it could be written like this should return almost but this is a nice Haskell trick to make a function an infix operator right? right so it should be it's just it will be just the same yeah just the same right but it's I think it's more readable like this okay okay now I can after this changes I could I could actually I could run the, the stack tests uh, and actually, it will it it will compile. I hope, uh, even though the metric is not implemented yet, uh, it's because I'm testing this as a command line tool. So it's yeah. So it's not a, some kind of a Haskell glitch that it compiles, even though the the, the it should not. But no, that's it's the way I'm testing, right? Okay, yeah. So there was some one error in our mean absolute error simple test, yeah, because we have non-exhaustive patterns in function extract val. Simply, the metric is unknown to to, to the engine, to the gval uh, gval engine, right? Okay, so now I'm going to implement the metric, right? So how to implement the metric? I'm go. I need to go to. There is some huge file. Yeah, I need. To, I, I I need to split it into. But so far, it's just a huge file. Now, what about Haskell mode now? Does it work or not? No. Why it's not working? OK, never mind. I need to, f I hope I fix it in the break. Um, so let's, so it, it's all, so implementing uh, starts here, implementing a metric, right? So these are. This is a definition. So I, I have a. I have a. Obviously, I have a data type type for storing uh, for a metric, right? Because there is an. There are lots of metrics, right? 
uh, root mean, square error, blah for machine translation, accuracy for classification, and so on and so on. And now I need to add a new metric, so I'm going to do like this. So basically I'm adding a new constructor, let's say constructor here, so the, the so metric could be also MAE, right? Mean abs which is which stands for mean absolute error. Right? Uh, and any questions about this? At this moment? So I'm basically just so it, it could be treated as a as a kind of a enumeration, right? In in other programming language it could be a enumeration or something like this, I guess. And now I'm going to implement this MAE, and that is going to be different than in, uh, if you are from object-oriented programming uh, background, then you, you usually, you have uh, some class, so you would, you would probably uh, define a class for, for this, and all the methods and all the stuff will be in one place, right? Will be... Uh, inside this class. I think the, the usual way in Haskell is different than uh, it is uh, it is in many places here in, in, in the code. So you just define, you would need to define the functions now, right? Uh, and both approaches have advantages and disadvantages, but that's the way it is. And actually I liked, I, I, I used to program uh, within the object-oriented paradigm a lot, but I liked this more, this, this, this Haskell style of defining types. Just one comment, as you can see, and this is really cool about Haskell, defining types is really cheap, is really easy, right? It just, it's, it's, it doesn't take much, you know, uh, it's really, really, uh, for me, it's really cool. So now I'm going to implement, uh, so I, I need to implement some functions. First of all, th there is this show, uh, you need to tell Haskell how to, let's say, print your metric, uh, your specific metric. So this is kind of boring boilerplate, kind of boilerplate code, right? So I'm just, I'm going to add, it's, why it's not working? Is a variable defined in Haskell not? I don't know. It's not remote, but you know, it's near, it's misky. So it's going in. Ah, so it's probably it's some stupid, stupid stuff about Emacs. If used as if so, it's it's Emacs fault, not Haskell. Okay. Okay. It's just. It's a variable defined in Haskell. Its values in terminology is nil. Maybe risky. I've used the file local variable. Hook run. Yeah, you can either. Yeah, it will, it will, it's a good idea to to read this. This one. Use the code above if you are more Haskell heavy. Savvy. This one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, probably good idea. So let's, let's restart the stuff. Probably I would need, or maybe just evaluate. Sorry for this. I just, I don't know. I checked this yesterday and it worked. Uh, region, is it enough? No. Um, oh no. Custom set variables, let's go. Yeah, I think I, I had. 
this seems okay. I'll just restart. Yeah. No. Oh, that's that's bad. Oops. Yeah. So something is wrong here. Okay. I'll just try. So, um, probably again we'll have this stupid stuff. Yeah. So that's a different approach. Let's take a different approach. So let's just switch to fundament. I will try to fix it later. But now it does not look cool. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, you might be right. Yeah. Haha. <laughs> oh, funny thing. Yeah. But I don't think it's the reason. But uh, I'll try. I'm desperate. Drink. Let's see another file. Ah, it's working. It's working. It's working. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Oh God. Mm. My old friend Emacs has uh, not cool. Okay, so now now it looks okay. Sorry for this stupid stuff. Uh, so now I'm going to to tell how to how so it's it's kind of a boilerplate yeah so when M A A M A E is printed this 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 value specific value it should be represented by no surprise M A E but it's needed here and now uh, something similar for reading right for reading the metric so you need to you need to tell that uh, metric type is an instance of read type class, class, right? And now something horrible. Yeah, I, so I need I need to do stuff like this. And actually, I will be very happy to hear how to do this in a better way. Uh, so I'm just writing stupid stuff like this. There is a better way. Okay, so there is an issue for this. So just. Just solve this issue. You can just write a parser. Pardon? Yeah, probably you are right. So do this if you if you. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. I should be there. Should be a parser here. Some yeah. So please do this. I would be grateful, really. So it will be something like M I E and the rest. As you can see, this is really. You know, raw life. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Would you be so kind to explain somewhere the, um, yeah, yeah. the construction of this uh, casuistic thing? Yeah, I mean, this, this list here? Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's, it's, it's a kind of a. Um, so basically, this is, uh, this is uh, right. Mm, Colon is for constructing a list, right? So you, you have a ta head and tail, right? So this makes a list, right? And so here you, you, you're, you're building a, ris, a list, uh, or actually this is, okay, this is pattern matching here, yeah. This is pattern matching here because Haskell has nice pattern matching uh, capabilities. So we match, we simply match. Uh, the first argument could be anything, and I don't, I don't remember what does it mean, what it means. Yeah, could be, but it could be anything, whatever. And the second argument is the text you are going to parse because it's really kind of a poor man's parsing. You are parsing the the, the stuff given at the, as the second argument, right? So this is this is here. So this is something like this. This is the, the second argument. 
because the, all, all this stuff, this instance read metric stuff, is about reading uh, some values from some text fr from outside, from somewhere, to, to your metric, right? And if, uh, so actually it is a kind of a list, uh, a list building used for actually for pattern matching. So it means if the first character of that string is M, is the if and the second character is A and the third one is E, then, not, then okay, then we should return M A E, right? And there's there might be also some 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 remaining text, some remaining string in the in the in the input, right? So, Bob, uh, if there are two yeah. With the yeah, you are right. You must be really careful about this. Yeah. So, for example, I was careful because there are some cases like this, uh, likelihood. Yeah, likelihood. Yeah, by one or here. Yeah, here. So you need. To, yeah, right. Good point. You need to be careful. For example, for BIO, they begin with the same. So you need to put the longer one first, right? Okay? Yeah, and. There's no control, like control set in terms of whatever expression and just to indicate that it should be the, the end of the string. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think if you, if you used uh, a proper parser, as, as uh, one of you mentioned, you could, you could have. A kind of a better control of what's happening, right? So you could, you could, you could control for, for the end of the string or something like this. Yeah, could be, could be done. Pardon? Uh, here, I mean, the spaces were were. Actually, mm, I think it, it's the way. Uh, why it, it is like this? Uh, actually, uh, I, 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 in when when Gval is working, it's actually just the whole string, right? So actually, M A E is the whole string, actually, right? But uh, here we here we we implementing metric as an instance of read. And read requires that you sort of uh, supply a parser, a function reads, reads press, pre, pre, whatever. And it, it, requires, it, it requires that you should uh, uh, consider uh, that, uh, that you should supply a kind of a partial parser. So there might be some, something else. But, but actually, when Gval is run, it's just the whole string. Okay? But why didn't you generate the read instance? Pardon? Why didn't you generate the read instance? Uh, yeah. That's, that's probably, yeah. Because I'm stupid. I don't know. Uh, so if you, if you, uh, so y you mean using this generic, uh, wh what is it called? Like ah, yeah. No. So I'm not so stupid. Yeah. The problem is that some, uh, yeah, I would do this if, if all, all metrics were like this. The problem is th that some metrics are parameterized. There is a log loss hashed metric, which is parameterized by number. As for example, f, f measure is also parameterized by number. Then, then I think it wouldn't be as easy. I, I would need to, yeah, mm, it, might, it might work. I don't know. I, but I, as you can see, there is some stuff going in ho here. There is some default value. Oh, I'm not sure that that will be easy. There is some default value for number width. But yeah, it's a good question. And I, I'll have a look. Maybe it could be somehow done. And you could give it a try. Maybe you, you could do this. And also, there is, and now, so I, we are implementing a number of functions, functions which work on, 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 on metrics. So now get metric ordering. Uh, 
So uh, here, here you have a very, a very simple function which just takes metric and tells, tells you whether it's uh, a kind of a, the higher the better on the lower the better uh, metric, right? Whether it's kind of a, the higher the better or, or kind of a loss error function. So what do you think the correct value for this should be here? The lower the better, because it's the absolute error, right? So the the lower the better, right? Uh, there's also another another similar uh, in object oriented uh, programming languages. You just put all the stuff all the stuff for M A E in one place, right? But here it's it's different, right? So. In object programming languages, get me metric ordering is input in needed. I, I, I guess there will be methods of, 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 a, of a class or something like this. Now it's different. These are just functions. And is input needed for, uh, for most metrics, the input is not needed, right? Uh, when I was giving this example of uh, when I, I was writing this toy test, toy challenge, actually I, I, I gave no texts, right? But do we need mm -hmm. the input, the texts? Because I, I told you that this is a toy challenge about guessing the age of, of the author of a text, right? But actually I gave no texts. But isn't it, but it's really, do, do, we, really, do we really need the input to our machine learning program for evaluating using mean absolute error? No, we just compare the values. We just compare the output with the expected value, that's all. So for most metrics, the value is false. And yeah, I don't, I don't need to do anything here because I'm using this underscore uh, wildcard, right? So it means uh, so again, it's 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 a it's simple pattern matching. Actually, the only metric which uses the input so far is char match. This is metric for for uh, for example for spell checkers or something like this. So this is the only metric here, and all the other stuff it's false. Is input is not needed. Uh, yeah. Uh, Okay, so in a moment, uh, just just one one thing. Actually, we could try to compile the the stuff and to run tests. Uh, let's let's have a look at whether I made a mistake there or not yet. Um, and we will be having. Oops! 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 Blah, 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 blah. What's going on here? Just so okay, it got slow. Oops, I didn't I didn't change this. Okay. Better. Yeah, this they the, the the failure is the same. The failure is still with us because we 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 still do not uh, uh, finished the implementation. Okay, so thank you and uh, time for short break and I will, I will continue after the break. All right, thanks. Okay, so let's go back to this, uh, to the stuff. Uh, let's go back to the core uh, function. Uh, okay, so I'm, where am I? Yeah, here. Okay, so I think for, for the time being, uh, as far as some basic functions operating on, on metric, that's it. Um, just let's have a look at, at GEVAL. This is kind of a main part of GEVAL, the, the core, the engine of, of GEVAL. And uh, just one one comment. I, I, in a way, programming in Haskell is easy because it's just functions and functions and functions and functions. In a way, in a way, 
I'm kind of simplifying, but actually it's 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 quite easy. It's 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 really you just you just combine functions, you just write functions, you just execute launch one function from another, and that's it, right? So for example, here you have let's go down here. Here's the main, let's say, the main function, gEval, which, which runs an, an, an evaluation for a given challenge and, and a given solution. And basically, it just runs some, takes the arguments and takes the argument and, and so takes the, the whole specification of, of, the, of the task and extracts, uh, extracts some... Uh, because in general, you need uh, free uh, files or free streams of data. The file the, the with the input, actually in most cases this is not required, but in general it is. The expected output and the real, the actual output, right? So and here I'm ex using some other function. I'm extracting the stuff, this free fi files, and then I basically run uh, for each metric because th there might be more than one metric i'm i'm running some other function which is called geval core yeah so it's just function running functions uh, so there is a whole you know kind of more or less it's a kind of a top top down here the structure is top down so if you if you want to see this uh, GEVAL core function, you just need to go. Oops. Okay. Something. Ah, no, okay. I think I broke my stuff here. Yeah, that's the main sort of main function here. Right? And again, this function uh, launches some other function, more basic, more low level function, and so on and so forth. And here is yet another function, but we need to implement somewhere the the actual metric. We need to implement the logic between behind this, uh, you know, taking the absolute value and so on. Uh, and here we have a function. Um, is it going to be here? Yeah, probably here. Yeah. So you have a function, so somewhere deep in, in the code, you, you have the function, some helper function like this, GEVAL core. Uh, uh, okay, e and so there are four arguments. The metric itself, for example, our mean absolute error the source of uh, the input values, the source of expected output values, the source of the output values. And as hopefully you, you, you know, the, uh, the, last, the last arrow leads to the, uh, to the type of the value returned. So actually it's, it's a metric value. Metric value is, is uh, metric value is just uh, a wrapper around uh, a wrapper for double values. So basically, it's it's just a, a, a double, but it's in in the in in a monad, right? Uh, so why do we need a, a, a monad here? Actually, really an I/O monad here. Yes, because we read from from the real world, from outside. We read we read some data, right? So that's why at least. At this moment, we need a monad here, and this is the place. So, if you are, if you, if you want to implement uh, a metric, usually you you should add some stuff here. So, actually, you could just copy and paste a similar function, which is called, uh, which is mean square error. Mean square error. Uh, the difference, mean square error. In mean square error, you just uh, Square all these uh, all these numbers, so you just so MSE would be like everything would be squared, like 
right? So this is, and MSE is already implemented. So actually, we are going to implement something simpler than uh, MSE, right? And by the way, why, why, why do you think uh, MSE is more popular in machine learning community than simple mean absolute error? Any ideas? Yeah, I think there are some mathematical reasons and there is also some kind of a practical reason that this is more punishing, right? It just gives you more, uh, there is more punishment if you, if you make a mistake, right? So it makes uh, the stuff harder. But there, but there are also some mathematical nice reasons for this. So, uh, uh, so yeah. And I'm going... Uh, if you if you if if you are going to implement this, you need. There is also some other helper functions. So there are. So, as you can see, there are no, let's say, objects classes like in a traditional, uh, like in an object-oriented programming language. These are just functions. But the nice thing is obviously is that. In Haskell, and in many other programming languages. You could use, you could uh, uh, supply uh, a function as an argument, right? So you could, you could, uh, you could, uh, an argument to your function could be a, an, another function. So you could, you could combine functions uh, in in the more complicated stuff. That's the way it is. Uh, so you are going to use GEVAL core without input. This is the most evaluation metrics are defined using this helper function which takes two which takes five uh, five arguments five arguments the first argument is the parser for the I guess input value for the out expected output value the second one is the parser for the uh, output value. In many cases, these are the same parsers, right? Uh, because uh, actually uh, the out TSV file and expected TSV file were just composed of numbers. But in some cases, the expected value is sort of different, is, is, is expressed in a different way than the stuff you expect from your machine learning model, okay? But in this case, it's just the same, so it will be out parser. What is meant by parser here? By parser is, is meant something which takes a string and returns some, some uh, item of a specific type, of a type related to, to the evaluation metric. We operate on numbers here, so um, on doubles, so it, it, you need a parser that takes uh, uh, takes a string and simply returns a double, right? So that's a kind of uh, simple parser. Uh, what's this? This circle? What composition? So I just I just compose uh, uh, some uh, row parser for uh, taking uh, parsing a double. It's in uh, yeah, I'm using some ready-made stuff, some some external library, some which is called data text read for you for this. Um, and I'm using some function which is called get value. And frankly speaking, I, I don't have the faintest idea what get value means here. I don't know. Uh, so I'm going somehow to extract the value. I've unfortunately my Emacs broke the stuff, so uh, but I think it's my some my stuff. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, uh, the problem is that mm, the problem is ah uh, I know. It's it's a similar stuff like we had with this read instance, right? So actually, usually the parser parser just uh, takes some uh, initial substring of a, of a text, right? And there might be some remaining stuff there. 
but here there should not that should be that should not be any remaining stuff so get value is to ensure that either it's the end of the string or it's the column separator which is tabulator right which is here okay so that's that's uh, what it's needed here okay so this is the same as for MSE item error item error okay item error is probably going to be different that's not not the best uh, name here so we are going to to use pardon Uh, where? Uh, what do you mean? Hold on. The type definition of item R is a tuple of double. Yeah. Mm -hmm. double. Yeah. Yeah. So it, 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 it takes. Uh, yeah. That's right. And, but actually, the item error I can I can show you. Yeah. It's here. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but this is, is this is yeah this this is probably should be squared right so I I'll fix it. This is for MSE so I'll fix it because the name was not not good yeah now it's kind of better now I'm going to, to and now I'm going to write a similar function for absolute error right so the signature is uh, the is like this so you take a pair of values right and you return a new uh, and you return the error <laughs> I mean the I, I kind of a difference between the values I mean, not just difference, but uh, the difference changed a little bit. So in this case, it will be, I'll take expected an output value. So w what do I need to write here for the absolute error? Ups, yeah. Hope that it, the function is there, not sure. Something like this, yeah, I guess, right? So let 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 let's go back to the point where ah it was there. So uh, now I need to fix this item squared error right. And yeah, so it should be item absolute error. So uh, gval core without input is written in such a way that it expects as the third argument expects some function which calculates, uh, let's say, a local error, an error for a single item, for a single text, for a single whatever, right? And we already, um, a moment ago, we, I, I wrote, I defined this function. The fourth argument is a kind of a, a combinator which takes this takes this local errors and aggregates them, right? Of course, I in both cases, both for MSE and MAE, it's just the mean average, right? It's just the mean average. And there is some nice uh, function which is called already available average C I'm using conduit uh, pipeline stuff and this is from conduit pipeline stuff I, I in a moment I will tell you more about conduits but for the time being let's assume that this is the fun a function which aggregates the data that are streamed you know all the items are actually pairs of expected output and the, the actual output and you just aggregate them so the the aggregation is uh, is is here, right? Is here, right? This is just uh, the simple mean of of all the values. So this is the same, and yeah, and <laughs> the funny thing this is also the I think during the first uh, talk by uh, by Julie at uh, on Monday was the question, <laughs> why would anybody need ID function, right? That n th for normal people, it seems that ID function is useless. But here is the good example of, of using ID function. Because the, f the fifth argument of G ever core without input is some final action. Sometimes, for some evaluation metric, 
you need to a little bit change this final aggregated value for some reasons. But in many cases, it's just the same value. So it's, the, it's a nice example of, of, uh, uh, of uh, to show that ID, identity function, is, use, is actually useful. And that's it, right? I guess. Uh, uh, probably it would be nice to refactor this, right? Because it's really kind of a. Uh, I'm repeating myself here, but let's okay. Let's make like this, and let's have a look whether really everything is okay. Let me try. So I'm running stack uh, test now, and we'll have a look. Um, I think that's all for the metric itself. I hope. Uh, no. No. Nope. The problem. Uh, let me think. What's the problem? Uh, MAE. MAE. Seems okay. Maybe there is this issue with. Nope. Made some mistake in the in the test file. M M A E simple M A E simple test A out D is expected. The config file is here. What's wrong? Ah, stupid. It was not about actually the error was not about. Uh, so uh, this is just this is a non-Haskell issue. Uh, simply, I made a mistake in my configuration file because uh, I remind you, uh, I'm in this test. In this test, I'm recreating running gEval as a command line tool. So I simply made a stupid mistake in my in my command line uh, arguments. Uh, in, so the, the, the problem was in the test specification, not in the Haskell code itself. Let's, let's have a look now. Yeah, it passed, it passed the test. Yeah. So I implemented actually quite useful metric, mean absolute error. And if you like, in a moment I will, I will uh, push the, actually I can do this now, mean absolute error implemented. Uh, right. um, sorry. Mm, let me have a look at this. Get up test. My simple. Is it okay? mean absolute error. Um, GitLab master. Oops. Um, and I just need to define so there is already there in the official rep repository. In a moment, I will push it to the. I'll just simply push. I just push it into the. By the way, short uh, brief interruption. I was talking about uh, uh, steam engines, but if you are a, a, a Zeppelin freak, I mean really, really Zeppelin airship nerd. You should you should go and see there is a, a, a Zeppelin, actually remainings of Zeppelin Hall in Poznań. You know th that was the place where airships uh, that were uh, uh, throwing uh, bombs uh, uh, on London on London during the, the, the World War the First. They were they were there here in Poznań, 
And there are remainings of this hole. Just a couple of stones, but it's really cool if you're uh, an airship. Okay, sorry. Sorry for the interruption. Um, so now I'm going to push the... But it's really... Uh, even Atlas Obscura has no entry about this, so it's really, really obscure stuff for nerds. Okay, so... <laughs> Master, whatever. I'm not, I'm not prepared, sorry. Mm. Or maybe, okay, maybe I'll do this in a moment. I'm, I'm, what, I, what I wanted is to show you, um, to show you the issues. So if you like, there are a number of uh, s similar uh, uh, issues, uh, similar to implementing uh, absolute uh, mean error. And you could just have a look. Uh, there is uh, implement a metric, yeah? So you got five, actually five evaluations metrics to implement. So I, I would like to encourage you to, to give it a try and to do this. Some of them are a little bit more easier in terms of Haskell stuff. Some of them are a little bit more easier in terms of algorithm, algori of, of, of the algorithm. Uh, so you could have a look at this. And actually, some of them are half implemented, so it's really not should be not a, a difficult task. So I would like really encourage you to to do this today, tomorrow, whatever. You could ask me whenever you want. I, 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 I'm 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 here to help you with with the stuff. I hope you will manage. Some of you will manage to to give some new features to to GFL tool. Uh, so. And, but there are also some other tasks. That's not all. Uh, yeah. Some of them simpler, some of them more challenging. But it's not really a... Uh, okay. So uh, now I, I will just put this... Uh, put this stuff here. SSH keys, right? Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, I will not show you the private key. Uh, hopefully. Okay, I guess now it should work. Yeah, so I pushed this. Uh, so you could. Uh, this commit might be interesting, especially for people doing this uh, who, who would like to uh, implement some new metric. Uh, so you could just have a look at the commit and you will find the places uh, where you would need to, to do something similar, right? Yeah. So you could have a look at, at the diff and that might, that should help you. Uh, the nice thing about the issues the tasks I, I gave you is that most of them has a has a already 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 has a uh, have a test, right? So I I've written a test case. There is a, a branch, for example, if you if you if you if you'd like to implement uh, word error rate, very very useful metric u used by a ASR speed recognition people. Uh, there is a branch. Uh, well, it's not, it's not linked, but the branch is ver really. So there is a branch called ver, I mean w e r. Yeah. And in this branch, you will find the test. Of course, the test fails at the moment, and your task is to is to make the test success, right? Uh, succeed make the test succeed uh, in, in, in for, for this. So it's a kind of a hope it will make your work easier. Okay, I, 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 sh I have shown you how to add a new metric. And I'm, now let, let us have a look at some other stuff. 
some of the issues I prepared for you are about adding some options. So not, not about uh, and this is really cool. I'm using, I mean, not my code, but the library I'm using. Uh, uh, there is a, a library which is called Options Parser uh, in Haskell. Yeah, no surprise. But it's really, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a really powerful uh, tool. And what's interesting, what's it's in interesting here, that it's it's actually using the applicative. Uh, it's it's an applicative, right? So uh, the idea is that. Let me have a look. Let, let let us have a look at this. So uh, you just specify an options <coughs> parser. You know, I, I'm 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 talking about this stuff like, uh, because G GEVAL has a number of options like command line because it's it's a command line tool so it's like a number of uh, options here right so so you need to handle this in a, in a nice way and of course in many programming languages you will find tools like this uh, I don't know for Python what is the standard some getopt or something like this uh, but in Husk this this module is really uh, well thought and it's it's a nice idea so you you give uh, you specify a parser the options parser uh, library gives you a number of combinators a number of tools a number of functions to, to, to do this and it's it's an applicative it means that what's let, let us have a look at here um, what do you think is G eval options what's this What's this? What do you think is GFL options? Is it some kind of a weird? What, what's this? Actually, it's it's just uh, a uh, uh, a constructor for some data type. It's just let's say a a simple data structure. Of, it's defined in uh, in here. So it's uh, so basically it's a specification of a uh, was this yeah, uh, options 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 yeah it's here so it's a kind of a, st a structure like like a struct in you know in C or C plus plus whatever so it's basically a, 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 a data type which has three fields right so in general you would uh, you would uh, in in terms of pure code you would simply write something like if you want to con construct a specific uh, specific uh, uh, item uh, of this type you would write something like uh, something like this like, like I don't know something goes here right You could write like this, or you could, yeah, you could, you, you could give the, 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 the values for each field. Because again, it's, it's basically a structure, right, of three fields. And each of the, of the field is kind of a, is not, is, 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 it might be another structure, but. Also, another way to, to, mm, To, to, to run this constructor, let's say, is to do something like this. So it will be yeah, you could construct an, 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 an a value of the type G eval options using a line like this. So you could have a specific uh, You could get something like this somewhere in your code, right? Uh, Haskell. Uh, uh, so you could you could write something like this. 
in a way, g eval option is, is a function, right? Could be treated, it is treated as a function. It takes three arguments. The first argument will be the, the first, the value of the first field. The second argument will be the value of the second field, and so on. And it returns an, an, an g eval options uh, value item, right? So that would be like in, in, in your pure code, but here it's, it's not, it's, it's, it's an applicative. So it's a, uh, so you invoke this function, you, um, you invoke, you use this function, let's say kind of function g eval options, which is kind of a constructor for data. And you use this, uh, but within an applicative, it means that in a way you are supplying the arguments in a, in, a, in a usual way, but there is something behind, uh, behind the scenes, be, be under the hood, something is happening. And uh, you're using special operators like this, a dollar within uh, uh, this angle brackets and the star within angle brackets. So you are evaluating the, you are uh, invoking the function, but actually something is happening. It's, it's not just the usual, the, the regular uh, uh, fun function uh, invocation. You just not supply just the regular values for uh, GFL options argument. You used options parser, uh, combinators and, and helper functions. For instance, the first argument, the first argument, the first item, the first field in GVAL options will be taken using some uh, optional flags from command line. So for example, init, uh, something like this, right? Something like this minus minus init will be turned uh, when uh, you use minus minus init in your uh, command line, that will magically turn into a Haskell init value right here. And if you use line by line, and he, uh, what's this? What do you think this is what here? Here around this or, yeah, no surprise. Uh, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's actually kind of a tricky because it's, it's not just an alternative of values, it's alternative of parsers. So you have a simple, in a way, so you have a simple parser for init and you have a simple parser for line by line option, just for one option. And you combine this, this little parsers into something bigger into actually the specification of, 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 of all your command line options, right? It's optional. It means that you need to supply, uh, no, it, it means that actually it turns into a maybe value, right? So I hope you, 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 you already, you've already seen maybes here, actually, uh, that, uh, on Monday there were some. So maybe is, is, a, is a special value which is either just something specific or nothing, right? So the optional combinator takes this uh, value and, uh, and takes this parser and generates a maybe value. If the user of, uh, of GEVAL tool used init option, or, and this is an exclusive, or used line by line option, then you will have just in it or just by line by line. And otherwise, you would have nothing, right? So that's uh, really nice. And you will have some even more complicated stuff here. I think it's, so I, I'm combining the parser for, op for options starting from some simple stuff and going to more, more powerful. 
If you are writing command line tools, I really recommend to use this options parser uh, library. This is really powerful. And you could even have more complicated stuff like here, right? Uh, so you could take, you could look at two options. If one of them is defined, okay, use use it, no matter what was the value of the other option. But if, if it was not defined, uh, you're just going to use some default value. This is something like this, right? Okay, so... Uh, Great. So, do you have any? I don't know. Are you are you really trying to do something for? Do you have any questions for Ma for the code to, for your for your issue you 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 selected or whatever? Or if just from time to time I see on 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 Reddit Reddit Haskell you know uh, message board. From time to time, I see questions like, hey, is there any intermediate stuff project for Haskell people? Some real project when I could uh, contribute, but n it's not, you know, uh, extremely advanced. And I think it's, this is something like this. Of course, you might be uh, a little bit bored by uh, machine learning stuff, so, yeah. But it's really, uh, I, th I think, I hope this, this might be this might be a nice uh, project for for intermediate people, and actually even for for beginners. Okay, any any questions? Any, any actually, does anybody of you is anybody of you trying to implement some to solve some issue? Yeah. Okay. Great. Oh. That's nice. <laughs> so which which one is that? Yeah, great. Uh, where's the uh, on the bottom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how to see this? I think you, you also created the change log actually. Oh. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Something is happening here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks okay. So the version is simply hard coded, right? In or there is some trick to no, data version. Oh, yeah, I didn't know about this. Uh huh. Okay. Okay, it looks okay. Um, okay, I'm just uh, going to. Oh, no, sorry. Mm. Okay, so I'm. Ah, so, yeah. Actually, it would be easier to just use command line, but okay. Okay, um, so I'm going to accept this. Cool. Yeah, merge request. It's here. Mm, probably be easier. Uh, so how to accept this? Mm, merge, I guess. Or not? Is it clickable? Yeah. 
so I just pull the stuff. There is some Jenkins continuous integration stuff, but it's, uh, I, I have not integrated this with, with GitLab repository. So, uh, so I'm, I'm going to check this manually now for the time being. Uh, stack test. Any other questions or actually? Mm. So I, I really encourage you to, to, to give it a try and to, to, to try to, to implement something for GEVA. I hope you will learn a little bit. I think this this my you know my presentation is a little bit different than other. It's it's yeah it's it's real stuff. So I hope it will be interesting for you. Okay, tests are okay. That's no surprise. And install. Gval version this is so cool yeah finally gval has version option thanks mm, another merge request not so far okay at least one uh, so what are what are the other issues you could you could work on you could uh, uh, yeah this one would be nice to as we discussed before to define uh, read ma read instance in a, in a more nice way I mean I'm trying to figure out how to, to do it but I'm still far away from, from the solution okay and so there are no cable purists here so nobody's telling me how to how to uh, run cable for um, this one is quite easy implement purity metric because actually this this is uh, s mostly implemented by me I was just I don't know I just forgot to hook it hook Hook up the function to the to the uh, to the engine, so it, that's quite easy. Um, yeah. Implementing purity metric for evaluating flat clustering. Yeah. Uh, yeah, get rid of compilation warning. This is a uh, funny. By the way, by the way, does any of you know how to extract comp compilation warnings uh, for continuous integration server? I mean, I'm, I'm using Jenkins, so in particular for Jenkins. I don't know how to do. I mean, of course, probably I, 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 I'm, I'm, you know, I would like to have a nice graph of for each build of for the number of compilation warnings and at some point in life I would like to get rid of all the compilation warnings so does anybody of you have an idea how to yeah I yeah but uh, yeah but there is no other way than just parsing the stuff there is no I mean there is no option in in in, in, in the compiler to dump the warnings in some nicer format, more machine readable format. Any ideas about this? Because it's really frustrating. Of course, I should get rid of compilation warnings, but uh, actually first I need to track, keep track of them to, to know how many of them are there. Are there but 
I, I don't know how to do this uh, for Jenkins continuous integration service in an I way. Mm. Yeah. Get rid of the one you unplug it, it, it just don't show. It didn't really improve your code, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I mean, the the issue is about if you if you help me to get rid of some compilation compilation warning, I will I will be grateful. What else? So I think the, the tasks. If you are unsure and but if you if you want to try, you could implement some metrics. This is kind of a, I think, nice, cool stuff you could you could do. For example. Mm, Stuff like oh, this is this is also going to be quite easy. I I would say, implement run. Uh, you would need first to understand what's going on, but that's not quite difficult. It's a simple mathematics, and yeah, could could try this. So um, mm, yeah, so um, any questions? Uh, I, I, I was just one uh, one issue is that I'm g I'm using conduits here, so the idea of I'm, I'm just I'm, I find some example. Yeah. So actually, uh, the all the stuff that is processed here could be treated as a as a uh, as a stream. Uh, as a stream of pairs, I mean expected value and the actual value for each item, uh, or uh, a stream of triples if you if you need to consider the input uh, the the input value for this one particular metric. And uh, the really nice uh, framework to deal with data that is streamed is using stuff like conduit so conduit is a is a lib is a haskell library and you uh, rather than uh, run a function you you could you could create you you can create a pipeline right just the same the similar stuff like the pipeline you know this was the the bash pi pipeline right here oops yeah so here you had the, the, the a, a bash pipeline, right? The nice thing is that you could have a similar you could have a similar thing in Haskell using conduits, and uh, it's really uh, when you are handling uh, data that is streamed, a streamed of data, it's really a uh, nice thing. So you you're creating a pipeline. So for example, here is some some function which is used deep inside the the GFR core and it 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 does all the all the all, all, all the work here so you just you create a source of data again and again this is again an applicative so this is this is what here well this is what what do you think what's what's this What's this? The strange, you know? No, no, it's, it's not an empty tuple. It's not. It's, it's not an empty pair. This is what? This is the constructor for for uh, for. It looks weird, but actually it's a constructor of for for uh, for a for a pair or for yeah. In this case, for a pair. I think you could. Does it work? I'm I'm curious. I'm not sure. No. No. Yes. Yes. It works. Yeah. So of course you could you could write a pair like this. But actually you could you could construct you could use this funny weird uh, expression. So it means uh, hey I'm a pair constructor yeah so I'm yeah. So 
like this, right? So, um, so it's not an empty list, but it's a it's a it's a per constructor. So I'm going to construct to use this constructor to use this function, this binary function, and plug it in into the into this uh, this pipeline. So this is going to be a source of pairs. So I'm taking two streams of data, and I'm creating a source of pairs, right? And then, what's happening then? Uh, I'm adding some line number. I need I need the line number, the item number, f f for example, for uh, reasonable error messages. I I add some context and stuff like this. I I'm doing I'm um, doing uh, for each pair. I'm 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 basically calculating the error value and then I'm uh, I'm filtering maybe it's great I could just yeah I could, I could break now yeah so so just uh, just uh, one uh, one thing so I, I will continue on Friday and there will be more on web application on web applications how to develop a web application there'll be more on this okay thank you all of you Uh, pardon. Uh, what kind of web stuff I mean, uh, really, uh, creating a sim. Uh, I, I'm going to show you a, s a simple web application I created, which is based on this GEVAL tool, right? Okay. Basically, is this is this is the uh, this is this okay. Gonito .net. and I'm, uh, and I will show you how to how you can create an, an, a web application like this. Okay, so we will continue. It's ESOT, ESOT, yeah? ESOT, where, where's the accent, yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you.